Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. I'd like to call the Brattleboro Union High School. Bellows Falls. Bellows Falls, correct. <laughs> Bellows Falls Union High School board reorganization meeting to order at 6.31. Um, before we get going into the agenda, I just wanna say right now, um, what you see on the screen is the closed caption for us tonight. And so if anyone wants to have it open on their computer, if they just go up here where it says um, on Otter AI, your first option would be to view um, stream on Otter, click here, and then this would open up on your screen so you can see it as well. So with that said, I'm gonna click onto another screen real quick. All right, any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, seeing none. Communication and public comment. Let me turn the chat on, open up the chat. If anyone from the um, public has um, comment to make, if you wanted to, um, just put it into the chat box, but if you go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see chat. If you open up that box, you'll be able to um, type in your question, comment for the board. At this time, I'm not seeing any. So moving on to reorganization of the board. First position up is to elect the chairperson. Mr. Superintendent. Yes, Mr. Clark. I nominate Molly Bannock to chair Bellows Falls Union High School Board. I second that. You have a second. Do you have one in me, Chris? Second by Jack Breyer. Do we have any other nominations or? Yes, this, is this is Deb Wright. I would nominate Priscilla Lambert as board chair. Okay, so we have, do I have a second? Let me just check all my screens. I do not see a second. So we have one nomination for Molly Bannock. We have a second by Jack Breyer. Mr. Clark? Uh, Mr. Superintendent? I direct that nominations be closed and instruct the superintendent to cast one ballot for Molly Bannock as chair. Okay, nominations are closed. I will submit one ballot for Molly Bannock as chair of the Bellows Falls Union High School Board. Molly, congratulations. The, the meeting is yours. Do you want me to call up that agenda or do you have it? Mo, you are on mute, just you know. I, I've got the agenda in front of me, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, we need to elect a vice chair. I have a nomination for a vice chair, David. Thank you, Molly. I'm gonna nominate Priscilla Lambert for vice chair. I will second. Thank you. Anyone else? Go ahead, David. Um, I would like to uh, move that nominations be closed and instruct the chair to cast one ballot for Priscilla Lambert as vice chair. So we, so we have Priscilla Lambert as vice chair of Bellows Falls Union High School. 
election of clerk. It's not a very tough job, other than you have to sign the diplomas, I think. <laughs> David? Molly, I hear no other nominations. I would like to uh, nominate uh, uh, Jason Terry as clerk of the Bellows Falls Union High School Board. Priscilla? Um, yeah, it should be fairly easy. Uh, Nicole was going to set up pretty well in a, a thing because we were talking about it last week about setting up to get the minutes because you have to wait till the minutes are approved, but then you're supposed to sign the minutes. And I'm going back through last year because of the COVID that didn't all get done. So that's, that's the really crucial thing to get done. But with Nicole setting that up nicely, it, it should work. Jason, are you good with that? The real benefit is you get to sign your, your children's diplomas. Thank you. Yeah, I did. So can someone ask me to cast a, one ballot for Jason? Uh, 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 pardon me, Madam Chair. I yes, direct David. the nominations be closed and one ballot be cast for Jason Terry as clerk of Bellows Falls Union High School Board. Thank you. Jason Terry is the clerk of the Bells Falls Union High School Board. Election of the Assistant Treasurer. Madam Chair, this was kind of, this was a position that was sort of set up to accommodate uh, our former treasurer who was uh, intermittently available for a variety because of his work. I, I don't know that we necessarily need an assistant treasurer. We may need a treasurer, uh, and I will defer to Mr. Prattis whether that's a necessary position. Mr. Pratt, do we need it? Um, I mean, the only time we would need it is if there, the treasurer was not, not around or something, but we have not really needed it in the past. so. I think if we do end up coming down to it down the road and we need one, we can always go back to the board and vote one in. Okay, so we're gonna strike the election of the assistant treasurer. Yep. Appointment of voting members to the WNESU board. Last year we had David Clark, Deb Wright, Brenda Farkas, and I was an alternate. Deb, I'd like to be a voting member. Okay. Uh, oh. Not Deb. <laughs> Molly, I, I, I'm sorry. I know what you meant. That's okay. <laughs> so Priscilla. I would be and, willing to stay on. And Deb. Yep. Thank you. I'm willing to stay on. And Brenda. You're going to need to, uh, if you're going to lose your uh, SU chair unless he is one of these three members as this is the only board he is on. Uh, so I would- Oh, so we gotta put David on that, there. Uh, Mr. Clark be one of those members and uh, I will, not sure how you wanna go from there. I think we can only have three, but- um, They can do that, Molly. I'll, I'll ask to be on the Rockingham one and hopefully that'll work out. Okay, thank you, Priscilla. So we have David Clark, Deb Wright, and Brenda Farkas appointed members of the SU board. Um, I'm always available if somebody can't get there. If you just, a lot of times I'm there anyways, but you can throw an email at me. Appoint truant officer. Chris Pratt, can you help us with that? Yeah, last year with the Bellows Falls Police Department have been the truant officers since I've been here. Uh, any members okay with that? Yeah, yes, Molly. And if I can speak to that very briefly, this occasionally question as to whether BFPD can extend their powers into 
neighboring jurisdictions. And um, a law officer anywhere <clears throat> in Vermont um, retains his um, legal powers as a uh, law officer anywhere in Vermont. So BFPD certainly could act as a current officer in Athens, Grafton, or Westminster. Molly, if you want, I can add um, the state police as well as the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, I, I don't think that hurts anything for sure. We ought to have our go-to ought to be Bellows Falls, though. They'd be the closest. To Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, do we sign a contract with our truant officer? My understanding was there at least there was some sort of stipend involved, but I, it's been a long time since I actually asked this question. Uh, I didn't know that there was, but... I haven't seen any contract out of uh, Wyndham Southwest since I've been on board in regards for a truancy officer. Um, Fine by me. We do, we do pay something. This is Flora. Yeah. But I could get back to you guys with the amount and um, if we have still a contract in place um, tomorrow, because I do not um, know exactly which one is the amount. Right. We, I know in the past, the other some of the other school districts that use the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department, we do have a contract with the Wyndham County Sheriff's Department, but I don't think we have one with the State Police or Bellows Falls PD. Well, I, I just thought, I, I know in the past we've had a line item for that. And that would, so it would require them to both agree. And if we have three people, three different institutions, then we've got three different contracts. Um, you know, that's, that's the only concern I have. Otherwise I have no objection. So we can keep it simple and put the Bellows Falls PD on there like we always have. And I'm sure if something actually went wrong that anyone that we needed would come running. Are we good with just the Bellows Falls PD and keep it simple? Um, I can't see everybody, but nobody's speaking up. So I'm going to make think it all uh, make sense. Molly, yes. I got a question. Um, yep. How often does that get used? Can we ask Chris Hudson? You know. Sure, it gets used every time. I believe it's either a 15 day or an 18 day letter of truancy goes out. Um, and that's when we invite the truancy officer to um, help us improve the attendance of the student. And, and I say that it's typically just um, someone from the BFPD, the same person all the time. They have a person that does this on a, you know, on a regular basis, goes and has a conversation with them. Um, it is not a threatening thing. It is a what can we do to help make this better sort of conversation. And and it's worked just with the Ellis Falls one. Yes, that's the only that's the only folks that we um, task with with that work. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to use Bellows Falls Police Department for a truancy officer. Appoint representatives to the Technical Center's advisory councils. I, I think somebody's going to have to educate me on that one. So Molly, currently right now, David Clark serves as the RVTC, the River Valley Tech Center, and yep. Mago Gia does the Wyndham Regional Career Center. Okay. So, David, you're good with River Valley? Yes, I am. Thank you. And Margo? I'm good with uh, River Valley. Or the other one, uh, Wyndham. Wyndham Regional. Yep. Did anyone else have any interest in that? I mean, we haven't. I haven't heard much from Wyndham Regional. David once in a while has something from River Valley. All the other members are okay with Margo and David doing that. You used to get a good lunch uh, at least once a year out of Wyndham Regional Career Center, but not remotely. <laughs> Pretty hard to do that now, isn't it? <laughs> okay, appoint warrant signers. Every year, I remember this is a lot of conversation. Aren't we all appointed? Well, I would like to offer a motion in this respect, and then I would like to speak to that, if that's all right. 
Yes, go for it. Well, the motion will be to um, designate two members of the Bellows Falls Union High School as warrant signers. And I want to just briefly define designate. I believe that the chair can make the appointment. Uh, Deb Wright and I have been serv serving in that role. Um, so the motion and I'll motion is to appoint two warrant signers to sign on behalf of Bellows Falls Union High School Board. Okay, can we get a second? I'll second that. Yeah, All right, David, you've got the floor. Thank you. Um, I believe that under statute, that unless otherwise designated, a majority of a school board needs to sign warrants. In the case of this board, that would be six members. And that has in the past proven to be kind of a problem. Uh, whereas, um, I don't want to blow my own horn here, but Deb and I have done a pretty good job of uh, getting these signed. In fact, if between the two of us, I'm definitely the slacker. So, oh, come on, David. <laughs> is there anyone else that's interested in that? And then I'll give you what I thought of when I was driving home tonight. Is there anybody that's interested in signing the warrants? Madam Chair. Yes, Jack. The only thing that I would ask is that at least one of the people signing the warrants also be on the budget committee. I think it's important to have some continuity uh, because when you see the money go out, you know where it's going if you've had questions about it. And that's a reasonable thing to bring up during budget. Uh, so I would, with that, that's the only request I would have of it, whoever you designate for warrants consider themselves also, at least one of them consider themselves a member of the uh, budget committee. So, yeah, that I, I agree with that. What I was thinking when I started thinking about, you know, how do we, you know, I don't know, change it up is the right word, but get other people involved and have other people, you know, have a little stake in the game because they're the ones signing the warrants. So they're going to, you know, maybe have questions where David and Deb have been doing this for so long that they're they're really good at it. So I hate to take all my senior people off it, but I wondered if there wasn't any other members that wouldn't like to see that stuff and be responsible for that. Is there anybody that would like to? May, may I uh, respond to you on that? Yep. I, I would be entirely happy to uh, make a friendly withdrawal of my motion. A possible another way to do it, Molly, would be by rotation, where all members of the board periodically have the responsibility on a rotating basis. I don't know how you would phrase a motion, but I hear you clearly, and I think there's merit to what you're saying. <clears throat> The difficulty with rotation is I think that um, there would be confusion and more chances of them, the business office having to track people down. So there is a benefit, I think, to consistency of two people. Well, I'm not trying to make this harder than it already is. I just thought, you know, if we had, you know, like Jason Terry has a huge interest in how we do things. Jason, are you interested in signing warrants and seeing what's going on? Sorry, I see them at the Rockingham uh, board. And if I do have questions, I, I usually ask the person who signs them. Um, so either way, I'm, I'm, I'm good either way. Uh, I'll probably still ask questions regardless on money. And I definitely would like to be interested in the uh, budget part of the process. Molly, could we yeah. amend, have three, amend that and have three people on there? I, I, I would accept why. that as a friendly amendment, Molly. Yeah, I don't know why we can't. Yeah. Okay. So, Priscilla, are you interested in it? 
Um, like Jason, I do a lot on the Rockingham one because all of us are uh, can look at those and have responsibility for that. So if there's someone else, um, I would let someone else. If not, yes, I would do it. Jack? You know, um, one of the people I worked with very closely for a number of years who knows budgets inside and out, had to defend one before a board much more hostile than this one was Margo Gia. Margo, are you interested in doing this? Don't feel the need to. <laughs> you mean sign warrants or are we on the budget committee? Well, sign warrants because with yeah, the no idea warrants. that I might dragoon you onto the budget committee. Yeah, I, I don't feel the need to sign warrants. I've done it before on the Rockingham board. Um, I, so I don't feel the need to throw myself in the ring on that one. Okay, fine. All right, so we have three people to appoint to sign the warrants. And How about Jason? Jason though, what did he, he decide? I, I I was just wondering if he was interested. He answered my question. He's going to see him and he can, you know, I'm just a brand new memory. You know, I'm trying to give him all I can get him. <laughs> then, then yes, I will. I would be glad to. So I got Priscilla, Deborah, and David. I, I have no yes. burning uh, need to be on warrants. I was doing it because we have in the past had difficulty rounding up um, a posse, so to speak, but I would cheerfully stand down in uh, favor of another candidate. So with the SU office where it is, I could do them if I needed to. So nobody's jumping up for joy. So we've got <laughs> Deb Wright, Molly and Priscilla. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's what it is. Deborah, are you okay with that? Um, yes, I'm fine staying there. I mean, I do have questions when I review the budget, um, the, excuse me, the warrants from time to time. And, mm -hmm. and I have been the last few years on the budget committee as well. Okay, perfect. So we have a motion on the floor to appoint three board members to warrant signers and we have them as Deb Wright, Molly Bannock, Priscilla Lambert. Um, so uh, Molly, sorry. does that, one question on that. Does that yeah. mean all three of us have to go in and sign them or is it just one person? All three have to sign? Well, I, uh, I thought all three of us had to do. Be that. What's that, Jack? I said, as it's as, as you've written it, it kind of implies it. But you could have two of the three. You could, so mean, let's okay. So can we have, could we have could we have three on there, but two have to sign? That way, if, if one of us couldn't get there or something, then it doesn't hold it up. I I think you just amended your amendment to say that. <laughs> Excuse me. This this is Flora. Yes. Um, so how it works is um, since we sent the warrants. The warrants will go to three of you guys, and the first two to sign, that's how it just gets signed. So it's, it's okay. only two spaces. When we do the warrants for payroll week, every other, every other Monday, the warrants gets emailed to you guys, and then we just get whichever two signatures it goes in. That, that's just how we do it for everybody else. It, we just need only two. But it's always good because, like, if you couldn't get it to it, somebody else might always get to it. Okay, so we don't even have to go into the office. It's all done electronically now. Yes. Okay. Yes, you. It's called um, Panda Doc, and um, an email gets to you, and then you just open your email, and you see the warrants, and then at the end of them, you just click, and that's how it signs. It, it gets signed electronically, unless okay. it is something specific that you want to look at, then you go always come in for it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm gonna try one more time and I think I have an I think I got a I have an amendment. The amendment to a motion, or did we reword your motion, David? Well, I uh, regarded Priscilla's amendment as a friendly amendment, which means that it, I believe is the main motion. Okay. 
And we have a motion to appoint warrant signers for the Bellows Falls Union High School. Deb Wright, Molly Bannock, Priscilla Lambert for um, the school year 2021-2022. Madam Chair? Yes. With, with the provision that only two of them have to sign. Okay. With only two of them having to sign. Great. Um, let's see. So I'm going to try to make a roll call. Margo? Yes. Jack? Yes. David? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Jason? Yes. Deb Wright? Yes. Uh, is Steve Fine here tonight? I didn't see him on the list. Okay. And Brenda? Yes. Okay, I think I got everybody. Okay, motion passes. Set time, date, and location of regular meetings. Wow, can we have a location? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we are the second and fourth Monday. Zoom meetings at 6.30. That's correct. Okay. Establish the newspaper to be used to announce school board functions and activities. This is always a hot topic. So last year we had Eagle Times and Bradbury Former, is that right? Yes. Is everybody good with that? Do I need a motion to establish the newspapers or do we just do it? Molly, I don't think you're hearing any dissent. You could declare. No. It. Okay. Bradbury Reformer and Eagle Times. We are moving to committee assignments, building and grounds for the high school. I Molly, have an that, interest in that. Yep, Molly, last year it was yourself, Jack Bryak, Colin, and Mago. I would like to join if I could, Molly. Okay. I'm happy to stay on too. Okay. I, would, I wouldn't mind staying on this. Okay. Does anyone else want to be on building and grounds? I'm hearing nothing, so I think we're going to stick with this four. Uh, next one is budget. Oh, who's the fourth? Myself. Okay. You just weren't <laughs> on the list, so I wanted to make sure you got on. Uh, budget and finance. Happy to do it one more year. Jack. Molly, I'd like to join too, please. Priscilla. Oh, this is Deb Wright. I've been on it in the past few years. I'm happy to stay on. I'd like to join too if there's room, Molly. Always room. Now, this <clears throat> last year we didn't meet the they that committee didn't meet and we did it as a full board. Might we want to consider doing it as a full board again? Uh, Madam Chair, we did have a committee, but it, the reason to have a committee is really for the convenience of uh, should, should members not be able to make it. If you have a lot of folks that aren't able to come for that second meeting, I can't have a quorum. And so what we have traditionally done is had a small team, uh, three or four people, no more. And I have all, we've always invited the entire board to participate. Uh, as, a, as in their capacity. Uh, that's always been an open committee and uh, uh, usually I'm chasing people. Okay, that's, that's great. I just wanna, you know, I'd be interested in participating, but I don't need to be listed. 
I'll be interested okay. in having you. Frankly, I'll be interested in having everybody because I think it's important that we all understand the base, you know, how the sausage gets made. Okay, so we're gonna have a budget committee of Jack, Priscilla, Deb, and Jason, but anyone can participate, be part of it. Uh, Correct, Jack? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Teacher and support staff negotiation. Where is Steve Fine? Is a question on that, Molly? Just, just yep. a second, Molly. Um, yep. You're listed on finance too, and you didn't name yourself, but you're going to stay on there, right? Yes. Thank you. I didn't really need, I was just going to show up every time, but you can put my name on there. Well, again, my, my, it's, it's actually the third name. Um, and, and the question is, again, if we keep the, keep it small, then I can have a quorum. Yep. Okay. Teacher and that support makes, staff. That makes five. Is five okay, Jack? What do you think? Uh, just as long as three of you, as long as, you know, as long as I get at least two of you showing up, which you, in fact, you really need to, because otherwise it's not a committee. It's just, you know, a couple of us doing this. So that's fine. Thanks. Sorry for interrupting, Molly. Teacher and support staff negotiations. I had a question, Molly, on, on that. Yes. I'm currently on the Rockingham uh, representative for the negotiations. If I was to be on uh, Bellows Falls, would that, how would that mess things up? It, it, we, we tried not to do that. Usually, Jason, because um, you have Deb Wright, who serves on this committee. You would therefore not have Deb on negotiations. You would also presumably be leaving a vacancy uh, in Rockingham because someone would need to be appointed to your seat. It makes no sense to have uh, a rep basically repping both boards. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we had, um, I think Steve Fine and Deb have been doing this. Is that right? Steve, Steve is the appointed rep for the Wyndham Northeast Supervisory Union, Molly. Okay. Yeah. So was it Deb that was the negotiation? Yes. Yes. Okay. And this is an appointed position, but certainly um, yeah. you know, that's, I assume that that would be fine with you. Deb, are you okay with staying on that? Does anyone else have I, any interest? I'm fine with that. Yes. I'd like to see what happens this year. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So Deb is our negotiations. Molly, can I interrupt it? Um, can we encourage that committee to get going on that? <laughs> yeah. We certainly can. So I have listed audit committee and Deb is on there. <clears throat> um, what does the audit committee do? I believe the it was an audit committee based upon the events of last year with yeah, the business was, office. Yeah, Deb's uh, accurate. That, yep, that wasn't okay. for the overall audits. That was for everything that were going on in the business office at the time. So, so do we... Is that a committee that met and is active and we still do this? I'm sorry. I was, to, I was I on that know. committee too. Yeah, were you active? Um, we were for a while and we probably need to be sure that we're looking at things, so we probably do need it. Deb was okay. chair. And Deb yeah, is not a lot, we didn't get. I'm fine, fine with that. Um, there were, we could revisit it to make sure um, what needs to be, you know, what was not resolved or what's still ahead, if there's still any questions, um, at least to make sure that that's covered. Uh, in the going forward after that, after covering, you know, basically revisiting, what we need to do next, I'm not certain about that as far as the committee is concerned, because it was newly formed for one particular purpose whether that purpose survives beyond um, the initial need, I don't know. I guess that's, Deb, why I asked all those questions because I, I think I understood what it was, but I didn't know if it was really something that was, you know, a committee we had to have all the time. Um, Jack, I see your hand. Thank you. Um, the, 
in the discussions that we had uh, about this, both at the uh, at an open SU meeting and uh, SU board meeting, and at uh, at the uh, at the district meeting uh, more than a year ago, was that this was to not only handle the audit stuff, but also uh, review uh, methods and practices. And I don't know if that is still something that Deb or Priscilla seem to feel is necessary, but I know that was part of the remit. Uh, Jessica West Clark was on that board, on that committee also, if I recall. And that, I think that was part of the idea. I would uh, leave it to uh, our members to determine if they think that still is. So was it a, was it a committee with other board members, you know, Rockingham board, Westminster board, or was this something that the high school was doing? It was my impression that this was a district-wide thing that there, because okay. I know that that uh, we nominated Jessa from our board to be on it. I don't recall who was on it from Rockingham. I probably was on it from Rockingham, Jack. I, think right that's, from the I high believe school. that's correct. Now that you mention it, yep, and I was yeah. on from the high school. Yeah, it was it was Deb, Priscilla, and David and Jessa were on it. There it is. Right. Yeah. So. Chris Pratt, um, or maybe, I, I don't know, Chris or Deb or somebody help me out to understand whether we need this committee or not. I mean, I, I, I'd leave that up to the members who were, who were on the board. I, you know, I think um, we've made a lot of headway, but it's all about the, the comfort level that they have right now moving forward. Either they're comfortable with, with what we're doing or, or not. And so that's why I defer to the members and based on their recommendation, I think the board should listen to their recommendation as it's an oversight committee for, for the business office in my office. It wouldn't be appropriate for me to say, okay, keep it or, keep it or leave it. Yep. So that, that's, that's a good answer. Priscilla? Yeah, I, I think since, since there have been a lot of changes and all of that, it would be good for the committee to at least meet, like Deb just said, okay. and look at how things are going. And then there can be, you know, maybe it only to be like one or two meetings, or maybe it needs to be ongoing, but at least that way we'd have an idea and that way we would be able to give some support and, and help in areas as well. Hey Priscilla, you sold me on it. There we go. <laughs> so I have Deb representing the high school right. on the audit committee. Uh, policy committee. Well, I have a question. Yes, Jason. What exactly does a policy committee do? The policy committee is supposed to help. So we get together maybe three or four times a year, uh, go over if we have to write a new policy or if there's a policy that needs to be updated. We were real hot to trot there for a while when there was a lot of stuff going on with um, well, the biggest one that I can remember that was a lot of talk about was when the state and everybody was trying to um, regulate, you know, guns in school and what do you do and what's the protocol and how do you handle it and how do you handle weapons and, you know, we went through a lot of conversation on how to get it worded correctly so that, uh, you know, a pocket knife had a different <clears throat> um you know, the punishment for pocket knife was different than, you know, if somebody had a gun in a truck or, you know, it was, it's just, it's not, it was about a lot of things. It's, um, I think that we have a couple policies that maybe we'll talk about um, with, with the school board members, you know, how, how are we supposed to do things the right way? Molly? Yes. So, you know, technically, the way that the policy committee was going to be set up was sort of district wide that there was going to be review of policies um, with other boards and then um, bringing that to each individual board once they had it like that group had a chance to work on it. 
you know, and we should be, as a district, be reviewing our policies every so many years. So, I mean, technically this committee could have a lot of, you know, a lot to review and be then bringing out to the boards. So should this be, David, should this be an SU thing? Well, Molly, I think Jack Breyer may be able to speak to this more precisely than I can. But the intent in the last few years was to have the WNESU policy committee review policy for recommendation. And then those policies would uh, go to the local boards to make sure that they were entirely suitable for local board purposes. A very good example of that would, would be that the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Unified Elementary uh, Board probably does not need a high school graduation policy. There will be situations like that. Jack. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, Chris has got his hand up. Chris, are you did you have a question first? I can wait till after you, Jack. Thank All you. right. The, the protocol that we had set up was that uh, as, as Margo summarized it correctly, the uh, the each board nominated folks to an SU to essentially a joint board, much like the joint negotiations committee, <laughs> joint uh, a joint policy committee. Now, that's the good news, and and yes, the process is that is as Margot explained it. There would be a um, an agreed on policy. The uh, SU board would recommend it to the constituent member boards and hopefully that would shorten up the process because it used to be a huge time sink. Unfortunately, this coming year, it's going to be a time sink anyway because um, in the transition between um, Mr. Kibbe and Mr. Pratt, a whole bunch of stuff sort of disappeared into the electronic rabbit hole. And so uh, Chris and Jessa and some of the other members spent a lot of time uh, trying to figure out which policies were the actual policies. And that means that to, to at least a nominal extent, we probably want to go through a lot of them this year. Um, so this is going to be work for the folks that are involved. It's actually good work because you learn how the place runs uh, and it's, it's an educational process, but uh, I, I won't, I won't, uh, I won't dismiss the amount of work. It's uh, probably going to be equivalent to the budget process this year. Uh, there'll be a lot of meetings at some point, maybe this spring and summer. Really sold it, didn't I? Yeah, what's the drawback? <laughs> Chris Pratt, did you have something you want to say? Yeah, I just touched upon a little more what Jack was saying, full disclosure. We have a lot of work to do in policies and that's unfortunately going to result in a lot of meetings. Um, we got to look at policies based on, uh, we have some policies that haven't been updated since 2008. And technically we should be updating all policies between every three to five years. Um, I've been trying to keep track as, as many as possible, but uh, whoever signs up for this committee, it's, it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of time because we have a lot of catching up to do because we weren't able to keep on top of it as best we could because of everything going on with the with the COVID and how many meetings board members and everyone are having um, without policy committee meetings. So I just wanted to- uh, uh, Also the stuff that we did in like 16, 17 is essentially disappeared. And so we really, it, it, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So we're just gonna have to go in there and clean it up. Molly, I have one last question. Yes. So even if you're not on the policy committee, the policy committee needs to bring it back to the board and then we technically tell them yes or no. So technically, if you're not on the policy committee, you're still on the policy committee. Yeah, everything's gonna get at least, there'll be at least the, the process, cause this is like legislation. You have to do two readings uh, before the SU board then, or at least one before the SU board and then bring back to the uh, constituent boards. I don't think my style would fit in with the policy committee of going back and forth. So no, thank you. I was going to nominate you too. <laughs> Priscilla? Uh, Molly? Yes. 
Um, but we also need to review the ones that are specific to the high school as a high school board. So, because there will be some that, that are specific to there. I know we had a whole huge, I can't get my picture, huge policy thing um, but when, when I was teaching there. So I, I, you know, I think we need to look at all of those as the high school board as well. About 70% are SUI, but there is definitely all the high school graduation, the sports stuff are, are for the for for uh, this this um, district. How many members do we need from the high school to be on the policy committee? I, I would say, you know, just overall, if it's an SU policy, I mean, I would say at the most two. I mean, this is one of those situations that goes back to the boards anyways. So the initial view is, I mean, less is more kind of approach. All right, I'm gonna stick my neck out and say, I'll be on it. Who's gonna join me? Yeah. I'm willing to be on it. This is Margo. Thank you, Margo. You'll, you'll probably see me from the uh, unified board. Okay. And I was on it from the Rockingham board before, so probably we'll be doing it from there too. Perfect. Okay, so we got our policy committee members, myself and Margo. Uh, next well, thing I, is to if I can suggest Mo Molly, if you have a poli if you have a committee with three people, uh, two are going to be a quorum. If you have a policy committee with two people, you better hope they both show up. Um, uh, David, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. This being a joint, uh, this being a joint committee, my assumption is that all the constituent members will meet together and work it out together, if only to divvy out the work. Because as I said, uh, it's going to everybody's going to get fifty pages this year, so um, uh, that would be my preference, and have them, you know, meet and work out any details they may have about it. Uh, much as we have done with the um, negotiations. I'm so we can, uh, I, but, but we also need need one for the high schools. So for those other 30% of them. So, um, so we would need somebody else. Maybe those two as the reps to the WNESU board, but we also need more members for this board. I, I would presume that the uh, high school specific stuff will be eagerly formed out to the high school reps for first first uh, swing at it. So my understanding of what we were doing was having two members on the policy committee that was going to actually be a policy committee for the whole SU district. That's why I thought two was sufficient. And I would assume just like Jack just said that, you know, you're, you guys aren't going to give me a policy that's for kindergarten, that you're going to give me a high school policy that needs to be looked at. Yeah. If I misunderstood and we need more than. Yeah, but Jack said we also need to have 30% of them that we have to look at from the high school. So, so that 30% we need, we need a high school board policy committee as well. With all due respect, Priscilla, I, I promise you that uh, you know we, we should have this constructed the way we do have the other joint boards and the negotiations as one person from each. I, I, I and and I'm not assuming that I'm going to be chairing this at all, but I, I again would assume this would be an open. Uh, open committee, uh, the more the merrier. And by gosh, if you want to show up and grab a uh, grab a stack, we're going to be thrilled to have you. But who's looking at just the high school ones? Then? Um, well, I'm saying you, you. I think high school would be if if we if the committee thinks it needs more folks, I'll bet you they'll come calling and saying we need more folks from your board. Because you're just reviewing the general ones, right? At the at the WNHU, because you're not responsible for the high school ones. Our board is responsible. We, for we if it comes to making certain that the high school ones coordinate with the uh, with the uh, rest of uh, the elementary school boards, then they probably they might want to take a look at it. You have to remember that, especially on the educational side, that the SU board and the SU has jurisdiction over curriculum and to a large extent educational policy. That's always a bit of a chippy issue 
when we get down to it, but that's how, that's what the uh, bylaws say. Uh, certainly, nobody's going to be eager to put push something onto the high school that the high school doesn't want because if for no other reason, then we're going to have three people, maybe four people who are on this board who will also be uh, representing their uh, elementary school boards uh, on that committee. I, I don't think we're. I don't think that. Uh, that the high school's interests are going to get abused too much. I was just trying to make sure that they were that the individual ones were covered. That's all. David, I want to apologize for the board here because I think maybe I opened up the rabbit hole a little bit. Um, I think I misunderstood when you were seeking members for the um, SU policy committee. Um, I think two is plenty for that. I was under the impression we were dealing with a high school budget policy committee, which was my comment about three would be better than two for quorum purposes. So um, I, th I understand what Priscilla is speaking about here as well. And I do think we should, uh, once we've decided the question of who will be on the uh, SU policy committee, we should think about who we might want for a high school policy committee. Okay, so I think that we have gotten down to Molly and Margo for the SU policy committee. Um, I guess my question, David, is that um, Margo nor I are on the SU board as a voting member. Does that matter? I, my response to you is it does not matter at all because all board members are members of the supervisory union board. Yeah. It's just that each individual board has three votes. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way it's set up. Okay. I thought you were going to tell me that, but I want to make sure. Um, uh, Madam uh, uh, Chair, so this is also a joint committee. It's not an SU committee. It's a joint committee. And so the constituent boards pick the folks, uh, and uh, off we go to the races and have fun. All right. So we do not have a Bellows Falls Union High School policy committee on this list, but by listening to this whole conversation, it sounds like we should have one. And what happens if I just say that the whole board is on the policy committee and but the bummer is if they don't I gotta have more people show up for a quorum. Jack's shaking his head like that's a good idea, but you could do it in any three kind of thing or in any four kind of thing if you want. Okay. Uh, Mr. President Mr. Pratt's got his hand up here. Either Chris? he likes it or hates it to death. Just to put out there, you figure 98 to 99% of the policies that you have are just, we're just looking at revisions and bringing them up to speed, meaning there's not a whole lot to work. You don't have to rewrite the whole policies. Um, we'll have, we probably have a, a few new policies. That means the new pol the difference between a new policy and a revised policy. New policies have to go through the first reading, second reading for adoption. Any policies that you currently have, they don't need to go through first and second readings. They just need to be um, amended. Up, amended and approved by the board. So um, if you look at, you know, usually when you have SU-wide policy, um, policy committees like this, is that it's good to have a, you know, many people around the table to offer, you know, their point of view on it, whether they're from the high school or from the elementary school or from the middle school. But keep in mind, these are these are policies and a lot of times procedures aren't included with the policy. The, the board creates the policy and the administration creates the procedures, but we do like to have them together so they're not separately. But 99% of the time right now, I can, what, by going through the policies I see right now, we just got a lot of amendments to be made and bring them up to you know the current status of where we are in education. And then we do have a few new ones like the diversity and equity um, policies that we that we do have to adopt. So I just wanted to put it out there. It's, I don't think it really matters how many people are around the table. I, I think it's just a, a matter of um, 
getting through them because we do have a lot to get through. So I'm open to a few or a lot. Okay, Margo. And I just want to, you know, realistically, you know, between all the policies that apply to all the schools, plus the ones that apply directly just to Bellows Falls High School, we're not going to get to all of them this year. They should be on a rotation. And I would rather that the policy committee focus on getting right, you know, X number this year than trying to do all of them this year. Get them on a rotation so that it's not an overload any one particular year. So if we don't get to the Bells Falls High School specific ones this year, well, you know, which is, this is a big year. Let's make sure that then those get addressed next year. That's my recommendation. Chris? Yeah, just real quick. Yeah, usually what, you know, what I've been trying to do or I've done with other SUs in the past, we look at all the mandatory policies first that need to be either adopted or revised and then move on from there. And then the policy committee chooses which ones they feel are the priority to, to look at once we've gone through all the mandatory policies. So Molly? Priscilla. Um, so if we set up the committee, we may not have to meet very much anyway, um, but then the committee will be there so that, so that you have it and it's ready for any of the ones at the high school that you do need to get to and do want to get to. So we're going to set up the Bells Falls Union High School Policy Committee. Um, I'm going to put myself on there because I just love the word policy. And who else would like to be on? I need three members that I can, you know, that can be around a little bit. I can be on both. Okay. Ms. Margo. Thank you, Margo. Is there anyone else? I'm, I'm one now with with uh, Brenda not here. Uh, I know she has been on one at least once. Uh, I would, and I feel bad that she and um, and um, and um, uh, our representative from Athens are not represented on these committees yet. So I'd, I'd kind of ask Brenda if she'd like to be involved. Okay. We'll put Brenda yeah, down. I would, I would, I would let you put me down for that. Oh, Brenda, I didn't know that you were here tonight. I, was, I know. <laughs> you're so polite, you're not like the rest of us. That's okay. I'm usually on the picture, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. Adopt Robert's rules for small boards. I think I need a motion for that, don't I? I'll make a motion that we adopt Robert rules of order for small boards. Can I have a second? Second. David, David is second. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this? Molly? Yes. Is that what we have used? Because I know we do need the, at the high school board, we needed a first and a second. And on the one for small boards, you don't need a second. So I'm thinking that we haven't used the small board ones uh, at the high school before. So you're, you're right. I don't think we have, but it's on the agenda. It's on. Um, we always have every year. And it's just sometimes you decide to do seconds, but you could go back. Um, every year we have adopted the um, Robert rules for small boards. You can certainly do whatever you want, but it's, 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 been adopted by this board every year I've been here, so. Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Nate. Yes, Jack. For uh, as long as you're under, uh, un as long as your membership is under 12, you can go, you can opt to do a small board. So if that helps your recommendation, there you go. What are the other differences besides the first? Having to second and not having to second. And uh, there'll be a lot of things people here will be fond of, which involves uh, asking permission to speak. Um, the uh, the the uh, 
the uh, amount of you know, uh, the, in a large board, you can require uh, that there's a round robin of all members before somebody can speak a second time. That's actually one of the biggest differences. Uh, maybe a real argument for uh, keeping the large board model, but uh, th those, those are the principal ones. Uh, and also in, in some large boards, uh, motions have to be written ahead of time. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to adopt small boards, uh, Robert's Rules of Order. Any other questions? What is the chair's preference in this situation? It, I'm okay. I think that I... I can do a round robin on calling on people. Um, you know, do we need a second? I've always done a second because that's what I was taught. But if if we don't need that, then you know, I think we're all adults here and can run a pretty decent meeting. So the biggest thing that I can see is that you got to you know, everybody's going to get a chance to speak, and you don't need a second on a motion. So I'm okay with small boards. Margo, what's your pleasure? Uh, Would you like small boards? Yes. Okay. Jack? Sure. Yeah. David? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Jason? Yes. Deb? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Okay. Robert rules of order for small boards is what we're doing. So the last thing on our, um, well, it's under committee assignments, but we got review and approve board minutes for February 8th. Molly, can I ask one more thing? Yes. We, uh, we forgot to do the continuous improvement plan piece here. last year. Oh. I believe. Yep. Last year it was Colin. Um, yeah, you're right. I skipped right over that. And just to let people know, I don't, we're still waiting to hear back from the state. I don't know with all the recover with the recovery and learning that needs to be going on this year, the SIP might be taken over by the recovery plan um, team. So, but we should still have someone on there for that. It might not be called the SIP next year. It might be called the recovery team, but um, just so you are aware, we should have at least one rep. Okay, I need a rep. I need a volunteer. I know last year, I mean, he's not here to speak for himself, but last year Colin was very interested in it. It's not on the board. Oh, is he not on the board anymore? Yeah, he's not on the board anymore. Oh, I didn't realize that that was. Yep. Jack, you got your hand up? Jack, did I see your hand? Sorry, I thought I had I muted myself. The uh, I, I would recommend Jason Terry for this. I think it's really important that our new Good idea. You know, the sausage gets made and see you know what the money gets spent on and uh, uh, the SIP is a good place to learn about. Uh, no, thank you. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, Priscilla knows this. Uh, uh, Deb, would you be interested in this? Not at this time, no, thank you. If no one else is interested, I can step up. You're into my next of my recommendations list, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Margo. The Molly, SIP, the SIP and the yes. recovery team talks a lot about, it, it deals a lot about with um, what we're doing to improve ed education in regards to moving forward. So it's a lot of education talk and best practices and um, academics, so. Well, it's a good thing I have a background in that. <laughs> Although let's not make the policy committee too onerous then. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Molly, okay. I'm, 
I was just going to – sorry, I was just going to suggest um, sometimes at practice, if a player is not there, we uh, nominate them for stuff. And Mr. Fine's not here, so <laughs> maybe, maybe that'd be a good idea. I think we filled all our spots. Thanks, Molly. Um, so if we're ready for the motion, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of, is it February 8th? Yes. 2021. Thank you. Is there any discussion about the minutes for February 8th? All right, there's a motion on the floor to accept the minutes as written for February 8th. Margo? Yes. Jack? Yep. David? Yes. Priscilla? Yes. Uh, Jason? I'd like to abstain, please. Deb Wright? Aye. Thank you. Brenda? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> the minutes are approved. We have new business for discussion that we need to go into executive session for. Um, I'd like to just finish off here. There'll be no action taken. If I could just go, if I could skip that and do that so that we could um, yeah. let the community know that we're all done. Yep. Yeah, Molly, and I think also based on um, conversations I had, I don't think for this resignation we need to go into executive session unless the board chair feels we need to. I've Perfect. spoken, yeah, to, the, I, I I've on, spoken honestly, to the principal. I honestly didn't know as we needed to, but I saw it was on here that way. All right, so let's just do it. Um, our principal, Mr. Hosden, has um, given us a letter and he would like Molly, I think we right. should discuss it in an executive session before we vote. Um, Priscilla, Priscilla or Molly, the, it's already in the Brattleboro Reformer turned up on my Facebook page this evening. Yeah. It, it does not put the board at a disadvantage by what Mr. Hodgson has to say too. So in regards to going into executive session, we have to be careful of we go in for the right reasons. So, um, Chris Hosden, would you like to speak to this? Sure, and I have no need to go into executive session. Um, I've, I've been open with my um, intentions all along. Um, um, and I don't think it's going to catch anyone by surprise here, but um, it is my intention to make this my last year as principal. So consider this um, my uh, resignation from the principal's position effective July 1st. Um, I'll just share with you some of my thinking on that. Um, the reality is um, I've been doing this for 16 years and uh, six nine, excuse me, six years as assistant principal and three as a teacher. So 25 years here at school. Um, and um, it really has been my intention to be done either this year or next year, um, mostly due to um, other opportunities, not necessarily in school administration, but possibly in some educational field or something else. Um, but um, at 55, I feel like this is the right time for me to move on and, and maybe try some other things with my remaining productive years of work. Um, so the reason for this year as opposed to next year is kind of twofold. One of them is, um, so we're coming out of COVID and we will be putting together the school back to the closest thing to normal for next year. And it really doesn't make any sense to me um, for that leadership opportunity to fall on someone who is only going to be around for one year. It's, it's a um, task that needs to be um, seen through the next few years um, for whatever the new normal is gonna be for the Bellows Falls Union High School. Um, and one other thing that is kind of more a nuts and bolts thing, um, as we wrap up this school year, I will be able to ac uh, access the retirement system and the legislators right now are um, looking to 
make some changes there that might not be in my or my family's best interest to wait on. And um, so those are a couple of the why now as opposed to um, why not later. Um, but um, I also have my youngest daughter graduating this year and my oldest daughter having her first baby and our first grandchild. So there's just some priority shifts, I guess, as well. So, um, th and again, that would be effective July 1st of this year. There's lots of other reasons, but by the way, none of them about any of you folks, and none of this is scandal or controversy. It's just time. Thank you, Chris. Any other, any questions for Chris? Uh, seeing none, I'm gonna go to- David has- uh, I have a question. Okay, Jason. David had his hand up first though. I couldn't see anybody, so. Go ahead, Jason, I already called on you. Um, Mr. Hodson, I would uh, just like to ask if you could, if you could shed some insight on why the high school basketball coach is not, or Coach Holler is not with the uh, basketball team. I'm not sure if the entire board members uh, know. Um, a little out of order. Yeah. There was a question as to whether that was in a question that's in order. I don't think it, I, it doesn't feel like this is the right time to be asking that question, but Okay, I'd like um, to withdraw my question, and I apologize. David? Molly, I would like to move that Bellows Falls Union High School Board uh, accept Principal Hodson's resignation effective July 1st with regret and a great deal of gratitude for the, I would argue, 25 years of leadership he's shown in this school Thank you, David. Is Would there any discussion? I would like to speak to my motion. Yes, David. And that is that um, it's really quite staggering to think that Chris Hodson uh, might even have a year on me in this institution. And we have um, taken a school which I think had a very mixed reputation and done a pretty good job of uh, turning it around. It's not to say that we can't uh, move the bar up even higher, um, but I do believe that uh, Chris Hosden was um, very much instrumental in making some of the strides we've made here. So, um, end of an era. Thank you, David. Does anyone else have any comments or questions? There is a motion on the floor to accept. Uh, Molly? Molly? Yes. Um, yeah, I had the um, privilege of working under Mr. Hudson and um, figure I really appreciated all of his um, time, all of his support. And even if we didn't agree, we could always agree to disagree. And he was always respectful and a wonderful person. I just got through being on the committee to hire the um, principal for the middle school for next year. And there were not any wealth of candidates. So that does concern me at this time, looking at that forward with so little time between now and July. So I just wanted to at least mention that. Well, I think he is going to be a hard act to follow. Anyone else? Chris Pratt? Yeah, you know, although I've only worked with Chris for three years, you know, we've been administrators in Wyndham County for a lot longer than that. And, you know, his, his reputation um, as a school leader, especially in Wyndham and Windsor County, you know, is, is known outside of the Bellows Falls community. 
um, in, in Chris's perspective that he brought to this position is very unique. You have someone who's been here for 25 years, not including he was a graduate. He was a teacher, an assistant principal, a principal, and a parent. I mean, that's a tough act for anyone to follow. And uh, I've enjoyed the three years working with him. Um, I'm happy that he's, you know, for him, but I do feel it's a, it's a great loss for us and the kids because um, it's not too often that you can have someone lead your school who has grown up in the community and has invested so much time in his life into the community and will continue to do so. But, you know, as a, as a former principal and administrator in this part of Southern Vermont, um, you know, I'm gonna miss working with him and having him around. So thank you, Chris. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. We have a Jack. Um, just wanted to say uh, that Chris is one of Chris's great values to this community is he really is of this community and he he wears it on his sleeve in a way that uh, a lot of professionals don't. Uh, I think it's uh, a tribute to him. Um, I, I had the privilege of uh, going down to Tennessee an educational conference with with Chris and uh, John Broadley many years ago and it was uh, it, it was a revelatory experience uh, really got to see uh, Chris and the way he interacted with the with the national education community in a way that I hadn't before and uh, uh, I would I'm sorry for the rest of you that you didn't get that chance because uh, you learned a lot. Um, and I uh, thank Chris for that. That was, uh, that was a memorable point in uh, my time on in public service. That was a fun trip, Jack. Thank you. Okay, we, anybody else got anything? We've got a motion on the floor to accept Principal Hosden's Resignation as of July 1st, 2021. Margo. With much appreciation for your leadership, my vote is yes. I thought you were gonna say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want him to leave. <laughs> Jack. I actually thought about no, because we got two years and was going to suggest that maybe we could save some money by having him bargain his way out of his contract. But uh, no one should stay uh, if they don't want to. And I'm sad to see him go and uh, understand uh, understand his motives and uh, wish him the best. David? Thank you, Molly. I want to just say that the last time I voted against uh, Principal Hodson was when the Bellows Falls Union High School Board wanted to elevate him to vice uh, principal. And I felt it was a shame to take a really productive teacher out of the classroom. I voted against it. However, tonight I will be supporting my motion and voting yes. I do remember that, David, by the way. <laughs> Jason Derry. Yes. Deb? Abby? Yes. Brenda? Yes. All right, Chris, looks like you're gonna start enjoying grandkids. All right. I didn't get to vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Priscilla. I Knowing that it's- I wrote a yes in front of you, Priscilla. <laughs> Knowing that it is going to pass, I, I really, I am really, really wanting to sit here and vote no because I think he's such a fantastic um, principal and caretaker of all of the high schools. So I think if he would not be upset with me for doing that, I would like to vote that way. Only because, Go for it, Priscilla. Only because Go for it. I would really love to have you stay. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, now we're at other or old business for discussion or action. So, um, I Did, think Nat. Can so, Jason talk to that at this okay, time? Hold Molly? on, Priscilla. That's what I'm headed towards. Jason had a question. I'm not sure how much we can speak to it, but. 
Jason, I think you're good to ask your question now. I just like uh, Mr. Hodston to uh, enlighten the board on why the basketball coach who um, was very successful last year and this year so far is, uh, has resigned abruptly. I wonder if you could speak to that to the board because I'm not sure everybody knows. Um, this being a personnel matter, the best that I can tell you is what you just said, Jason, is that he resigned. Um, and um, typically when someone resigns, as I just did, you would leave it to the individual who made the decision to resign to explain why they resigned. And that's all I would have to say, at least um, in open session or without um, further guidance from the superintendent. Molly? Yes, Jason. I'd like to make a motion that the board um, do an exit interview on Coach Holler as a standard operating procedure. Chris Pratt, help me out. And the board can do an exit interview, but usually um, Coach Holler is not a certified teacher under the state of Vermont, he's a coach, and therefore, um, you know, you can do an exit interview, but it's really not under the board's pur purview or role to um, involved in those matters that aren't tied to teachers that carry certification. Molly, can I speak to my motion? Sure. Um, it's just that we've had four high school basketball varsity coaches in the last, well, if we have another one next year, we'll have four, four years. And I would like to solve that. Uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that the classroom of athletics um, is just that. And I think it's important whether he's the basketball coach. I mean, he was a paid employee. And I think, uh, you know, he might have something to say as uh, that's imperative that we can make sure we hire the right person for um, the next time. If, if all of a sudden he wasn't the right person. So um, I really just think it's very important that we hear why Coach Holler left. And uh, so we can make sure it doesn't happen again. Otherwise, it's, we're going to be doing the same thing over and over and over again. Thank you. This is a point of order. Do we have a motion on the floor, Molly? Yep, we do. There is a motion on the floor to invite Coach Holler in for an exit interview. Anybody have any questions or comments on that? Well, I think exit interviews are always a good idea. I just wonder if, is it, I, I question, is that in the purview of the board or is that more a uh, personnel issue for the administration? It feels like a personnel issue, but I'm gonna let Jack speak because he got his hand up. The most unpleasant period I ever had on this board was when a former basketball coach got into a snafu with some of the parents and with some of uh, the uh, kids who didn't think they'd had enough time. And it ended up eating up at least four board sessions. Um, I, I, I love our sports program, but I do believe that the only times we've ever had these kind of requests have been on sports programs and, and education uh, interviews might be a thing, but these, but unless the member of the teaching community or in this case, the paraprofessional specifically asks Mr. Pratt for an opportunity to interview or appeal a decision to the board, I think it's inappropriate for the board to do it. it it's just extends the process out. If, if our coach feels that he's been treated unfairly and wants a hearing in front of this board in private, that's fine. But otherwise, I think it, uh, it suggests that uh, sports has a higher priority than education or that the sports program is somehow exempt from our normal personnel processes and I really have to tell you again from experience that is a hole you do not want to go down. 
right. May I reply to Jack? I lost everybody, but um, Chris had his hand up and then you can reply. Yeah, so just a little bit more on what Jack is saying. Um, the, the coach is an at employee, is an at will employee. Um, technically, you can get rid of any at will employee with, with no reason, no just cause. And even at that, that's part of the day to day operations of a school in regards to this here. And it is not within the board's, you know, to have a, you know, a, you know, to, to have someone come in. He's not part of a union. He's not part, of, he doesn't have the same protection or, you know, any employee will doesn't have the same protection that fall into the board. Any community member has a right to come in and to adjust the board during um, public comment. And if that's something that, you know, someone wanted to do from the public, including the basketball coach, they have that opportunity to do so during that public comment time. And so I don't think the board needs to approve to have, um, you know, someone come into the, for an exit interview with the board when it's not part of their, really their, their role to be overseeing non-certified staff. Jason. Well, I just think, I just think that, you know, possibly, I, I don't know. I don't know what the issues were. All, all I know is he was very successful. He did a lot with the kids over the last two years each day. And, um, and I'm not sure if it was about playing time or not. And uh, maybe, maybe if that is the issue and there's some, as Jack said, a parental thing with playing time or a kid with playing time, then maybe we need to look at that and, and, decide what direction we want to go in as the uh, uh, gatekeepers for the school. And I you know maybe there's issues on the girls team. You know, I'm hearing there's issues on the girls team as well. So maybe we need to, you know, find out exactly what is going on. And um, I don't think it's going to hurt by the board asking a few questions and maybe Mr. Holler will be like, you know, I just had enough. I, I don't know. Um, it's not going to hurt. Thank Chris you. Pratt. I'll, I'll defer to David Clark and I, I can respond after him. Go ahead, David. Well, Molly, I see no harm in extending the invitation to do an exit interview to um, the coach. I think Jason does raise an interesting point as to whether it would help us um, maybe identify a pattern that we don't want to continue to repeat if we've been through four coaches in four years. But we'll throw a couple of cautions up. One caution is that um, I would, would regard it as a personnel matter that may very well be appropriate for um, executive session. And the principal reason that I'm saying that is that um, when you're talking about coaching, you may very well be talking about what we refer to as student records. And that is very much an appropriate uh, executive session discussion, which would be inappropriate for a public discussion. Um, I'm, I'm prepared to uh, support the motion that issues the invitation, even though it is an irregular situation. I think we want to be very careful about how we treat um, what may be the confidential aspects of that uh, situation. <clears throat> so I'm going to tell you that I... I'm not a fan of us getting involved in personnel matters. <clears throat> we, it, it's, it's not what we are here to do. I would support Coach Holler if he wants to come in and he wants time at public comments where he can um, talk to us in a very generic way to be able to tell us if he has some insight for us. On, on our coaching staff, on how we're doing things. But yeah, it's a whole lot of stuff that we shouldn't be getting involved in because if it is about basketball, then it's about a lot of students, a lot of student athletes, because what else is it about other than that? And we shouldn't be talking about that. If there's a problem, and, you know, 
Chris Pratt and Chris Hodgson haven't taken care of it and we need to know about it, then we need to go to executive session if that's really, if there's really a problem. Um, I don't know the whole story and, but I'm just, I just know that in a public meeting, we gotta be really careful what we're doing. And we have to have good reason to go to executive session. Anyone else? We have a motion on the floor. Um, Molly, yes. yes. Um, it, it, because it, it would be involving personnel, it would it would need to be an executive session. I don't think I don't think a public comment would be an appropriate time at all. But in, if it's an executive session, then you know if he wants to give us information, it might help, and it might help everybody. Um, our administration and our board um, to see what, what he has to say if he wants to come and talk with us. Okay. There's a motion on the floor for to invite. Margo has her hand up. Sorry. Yes, Margo, I'm sorry. I couldn't see you. Um, you know, I, I think I um, agree with what you said in terms of that it is really not the purview of the board to be conducting exit interviews um, on staff such as this. It is really an administrative function. Um, I think that although, and so I guess, you know, we can make a rec, I would say we can make a recommendation either that he come, comes and want and chooses and initiates talking to the board um, or you know it's probably a good practice best practice for exit interviews to be conducted by administration and then those you know if there's concerns to bring more to a policy level or something like that to bring to the board but you know I don't believe that we should be micromanaging how administration is conducting matters. So anyway. Hey, <clears throat> excuse me, Priscilla. Um, just a question on that. I think we're kind of blind to what is going on, and that's fine. Um, but, and, but maybe if we went into executive session, then Chris could fill us in, and that would give us more insight as to whether, you know, um, how we wanted to do this. Offering him the chance, though, like David said, does not mean that he's going to, you know, want to, but at least it opens it up and allows him the chance. So there's two ways of doing that. Either we go into the executive session and explains to us or or we can you know offer him the chance to come. okay um the only people i can't see i believe now is deb Wright and brenda do you have any comments before we go to the motion no ma'am i'm set <clears throat> Mr. Pratt is his hand up. Uh, yes, Chris. Um, and I just, I just want to, you know, say that this is a very slippery slope. You hire an administration to deal with personnel, and I think that's what we should let them do. I think if you start going down this, this, this road of any time, you know, for whatever reason, the administration makes a decision, or for whatever reason that that someone may leave or you know or if someone's not happy with administrative decision you're setting up the administration to know that if a parent or a community member doesn't like what the administration has decided that they can go to the board and the board will have an executive session or some sort of session and maybe they'll overturn what the administration's saying that's why these procedures are set up in such ways that administrative handle the personnel issues so i am just trying to throw caution out into the wind it's a very, very slippery slope. You hide um, a principal and assistant principal and staff to, to do their jobs. I think we need to let them do their jobs. As far as 
even if we went into executive session, we can't give you any more information than Mr. Hodgson has already provided because it was a resignation or we'd be liable. Jason Terry. So I just have uh, just one quick counterpoint to Mr. Pratt. Um, I was not provided, I know it's my first day here, but I was not provided documentation on why Mr. Haller left. Um, and I'm just seeking knowledge to, as to why he left. And, and if I'm a board and we hire the next principal, and if we hire four in the next four years, I would want somebody hopefully to do exit interviews on that principal to um, find out what exactly is going on. Maybe there's an issue at the school. Maybe there's not. Maybe maybe there is a, a you know a, a parental you know interference. The same the same thing that we're doing here. You know we're asking questions, and administration is you know not not backing not backing that up so maybe maybe it's the same same things it's on a different scale i, I it's not going to hurt to you know other than because in open public comment he only gets to comment we don't really ask questions uh unless i'm wrong but in a, if we're able to ask him questions he can answer them and we can get more knowledge that way that's that's all i'm just trying to seek knowledge so we can get it right going forward so we don't keep repeating the same thing that's all Yes, Chris. I understand what Jason's saying, but legally, we have someone who resigned on any level. It, like Chris said earlier, if you want more information in regards to why the individual resigned, you have to go to that individual because if we said anything more than that, we'd open ourselves up to a lawsuit. So I think you know that's why we're standing the ground on this because legally, I don't want a lawsuit. <laughs> I don't think any of us do. And I understand that you want more information, but like I said, it was a resignation. You'd have to go to that person, you know, directly to ask why that, you know, if, if they wanted to tell you why they resigned. I understand that <clears throat> it feels out in the dark a little bit, but I mean, like I said, the reason we're standing our ground is because we don't want a lawsuit, and that's all we can say is there was there was a resignation. If if someone doesn't resign, then then yeah, I mean, we we can bring the board in in on the loop on, on those situations. But in this case, you know, anytime we have something like this, we, we just can't do that. Jack Breyer. Oh, thank you. There's a real big difference between a resignation and a termination. Uh, I think that in, if someone feels that they've been terminated wrongly, they have the right to appeal to the superintendent and if not satisfied, appeal to the board. Uh, we've done that with teachers on the occasion. Uh, not very often, but we've done it. But if somebody leaves and they resign, then that's the end of our involvement with the matter. If they feel that the public needs, if that person feels that the public needs to know something about it, they can speak to, uh, to us as a member of the public, or for that matter, they could speak to uh, Susan Small here if she's still on, because I'm sure she could fill some space tomorrow if she needed it. But it's not our purview. Uh, as I say, it's very, it's, it's poor practice. Uh, and we've done this a couple of occasions now where we've spent vastly more time on a coach leaving than we have on a teacher firing. Uh, and I, um, I'm not comfortable with that and, or what it says about our priorities. I just, you know, I will wish, it, will wish the coach well. And I think that should be the end of it. Okay, we get a motion. There's a motion for an exit interview from Coach Holler. Margo, what's your pleasure? Sorry, couldn't find the mute button um, mm -hmm. or unmute button. Um, no, please. Jack? No. David? I vote yes, Molly. Priscilla? I would say no, it was a resignation, but if he wants to come and ask to it, that we should definitely hear him in an executive session. Jason? Yes. Deb? Yes. Brenda? 
Is Brenda still with us? Uh, I'm not seeing her. So I'm going to vote no. You have four no's and three yeses. I would um, be fine if Coach Holler wanted to come into community comments, but the way that the way this has all panned out with him giving a resignation, just that's just what it is. I have, um, I think I have one other business for discussion. Um, we have a board member who is um, not a board member anymore, Colin James. And it's been brought to my attention that maybe he would like to have been recognized. And um, between Nicole and Chris, they have made him a little certificate. And I think Chris is trying to bring it up here for me. And if I read it right earlier, it's maybe six years of being on the high school board. And they've I'm trying, Molly, my internet's moving really because <laughs> well, I have so many screens right. open. Uh, so, so Colin has been on the board for six years and Nicole has made him up a little certificate and they're going to mail it out to him. And and he, he tells us he's still going to be involved. So. <clears throat> No, it's here somewhere. I just got to find it. I'd like to, while we're looking for it, just say thank you to Colin for his years of serving on the board, as well as I believe some of those years as leading the board. Thank you. So I don't know if it's important that we actually see it or not, but they made up a nice little certificate and they're going to send it to him. And thank you, Colin, for being on the board. I yeah, think we have. Uh, I don't know where it went. I had it up earlier yeah. to tonight. That's so okay. Right now. Um, we have made it all the way down to director's comments. Margo? Um, I just wanted to, I don't know if anyone's been reading the um, live feed comments. I know it's awful. Quite hilarious, but if I was really needing them, they wouldn't be very helpful. <laughs> and so I don't know if that's just a product of the service that we're using. Margo, Larry was really very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't knock Larry. <laughs> Amy Robin, I don't have any other comments except welcome to our new, I think we have one new board member and Jason, glad to have you on board. Uh, Jack Breyer. We have two vacancies and that's two vacancies too many. Uh, I would like to uh, ask interested members of our community to really consider uh, joining this institution. What we have in New England is not really a democracy, but a participatory democracy. The decisions are made by those who show up. And we'd like a couple of you to show up. And I would ask, uh, in addition to, uh, to those hearing me, uh, I would appeal to our board members, and I would also appeal to the select boards of our various communities because they often know somebody who is actively engaged and could be put to good use uh, helping decide educational matters. So uh, uh, it's on you to the uh, select boards of uh, Rockingham and Westminster. Give us a hand, please. Thanks so much. David. Thank you, Molly. Um, I have two comments. One is I also would like to recognize the fact that uh, Jason Terry's on this board. 
Um, he asked me what I thought, and I said, Jason, it's the varsity team. And I will note that in his um, uh, rookie appearance there on the varsity team, he darn well near put one over um, the goalpost. So that's a pretty good showing coming out of the gate. Um, but I want to get a little bit more serious here and, and just uh, let everyone know that I'm behind the Act 173 action alerts, which you've been receiving. Of course, don't blame me uh, exclusively because Jack Ryers and Paul did this too. And those are coming from the um, uh, Act 173 coalition has a new name and I can't remember it. And to cut to the chase, the coalition has a lobbyist working the state house in Montpelier. Uh, she's sizing the situation up on a daily and in some cases hourly basis. And every so often, uh, Maggie Lenz is putting out an uh, action alert, which in turn, um, I've asked Chris based on a uh, WNESU directive at our last WNESU meeting to distribute to board members. If you have the time, if you have the bandwidth, it would be extremely um, effective if you can uh, check in with our legislators and tell them that paying serious attention to um, uh, reforming the weighting formula in Act 173 is important because if we do not uh, uh, reconstitute re, uh, that formula, we're looking at a hit, and this is, this is old news, we're looking at a hit across the WNESU of somewhere between 900,000 and $1.1 million in new local tax effort if the uh, current waiting formulas stand. We've got to do something about it. And it's important that anyone uh, who has the time and the energy uh, start bending the legislat local legislators' ears on it. So please. Um, Jack be out. Priscilla? I just well, um, yes, um, I think the biggest plus factor for going ahead with schools right now and opening them up, I'm looking forward to them hopefully being back uh, five days a week as soon as possible. Um, the teachers are able to start getting vaccines this week the uh, 55 and up uh, ones with medical conditions can also sign up. So that gives them several ways of doing it. The ones, uh, any teachers that have the medical conditions can sign up through the state next week. Um, all of them down to age 16. So that includes all of our teachers and, and paras and any of those that need vaccine nations that have medical conditions. But we also have the um, special clinics for teachers that are starting as well and can sign up. So um, that should open it up more for our children to be coming into schools five days a week and be getting back to normal. We can also, what is it? Eight families can get together now, according to the, um, Governor, so, and even that have been vaccinated, eight that have been vaccinated, then that means two weeks after the second vaccination or just two weeks after the Johnson, which is one. And they can get together with one family that is not vaccinated. So he is looking forward to opening up and there's supposed to be more um, things that he's adding to it um, at his conference on Friday. So I'm really looking forward to those things. Thank you. Jason. Thank you, Molly. I um, just want to say thank you to my uh, fellow board members. Uh, I want to say thank you to Mr. Hodgson, Mr. Broadley, Mr. Pratt. And, um, you know, this is not easy being on a board. It's, uh, you know, I'm definitely not a politician. And uh, I don't like politics. Well, I don't like direction of all the politics or, or what, you know what I'm trying to say, I think. Um, I think we have a lot of work to do. I'm prepared to do that. And uh, I think that, you know, we could really do a good job. And, uh, you know, I, I, I accept the challenge and let's go. 
Thank you. Deb? Hi. Uh, well, I want to say thank you to the new board member who's on board, Jason. Um, thank you to those who are leaving soon, Mr. Hodson and Colin James, who is not returning to service um, after six years. And also um, to say today we celebrate International Women's Day, a day for women to stand up and get going on any issues that occur. I mean, that's not to slight the men on our boards or anywhere else, it's simply that today is celebrated as International Women's Day. Thank you. Brenda? No, Brenda. I would like to thank Mr. Hodgson. It's been a pleasure. Um, I won't won't be away from him as quickly as the rest of you because he's stuck with me for a couple more years because our daughters are best friends and in college together. Um, I'm looking forward to that, Molly. <laughs> Hopefully in two years we'll be at an outside graduation at Plymouth State. So. Let's hope with no masks. <laughs> Look, good luck and thank you, Colin, for your service. Date of next meeting. So the calendar tells me March 22nd, 630. Thank you, everyone. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>